Welcome to Levita Rosa. I'm your host Pinky, and today we will be discussing grownish. So if you'd like to see more, then just stay tuned. Okay, y'all. So I've really been having a fun time with these rants, and y'all really have been responding to them. If you haven't seen my other rants, the playlist will be down below as well. I did a rant on Tyler Perry, America's Next Top Model, Stop Touching My Hair. What else? Oh, and I did a rant about Blue Ivy. So make sure you check those out in that playlist. But today we're talking about Watch out where I'm going My heart's beating so loud. I think the theme song is like one of the best things about the show. But um, Grownish, we're talking about Grownish, which is a part of the whole like ish universe. There's Blackish, and then there was Grownish was the first spinoff, and then we have Mixedish now, the second spinoff. And so, and all of these shows were created by Kenya Barris. I have to say that my rant is inspired by As Told by Kenya. I love her videos about Grownish. I love her channel, period. So shout out to her. But I wanted to like kind of give my take on how I feel about the show because I had such high hopes for this show. I really wanted this show to be great. Um, and I feel like it still could be, but there's some changes that need to happen. Well, my favorite genre of TV show is sitcoms. Like I do love, I like dramas. I like reality. <laughs> um, you know, that's like my guilty pleasure. But one of my favorite genres of all time is sitcoms, black sitcoms to be more specific. I think I just really love watching black people be joyous and giddy and laugh as well as you know just seeing them in their everyday lives whether they have you know this high top paying job or they just you know work at the piggly wiggly black people are so entertaining to me so so to watch family on tv in a sitcom form is my favorite i love it i feel like the types of sitcoms lie on a spectrum on one end of the spectrum you can have your wacky exaggerated you know caricature of real people type of sitcoms i mean they have their moments of realness but it's really out there i i think of them as live action cartoons um if you watch my tyler perry video then you will get a better essence of what I'm saying there. I think the best examples would be Tyler Perry shows. House of Pain, Meet the Browns, you have these characters that kind of act outlandishly. I think another good example would be Martin, one of my favorite shows of all time. And he plays like so many different characters like Roscoe, Shanene, the crazy police officer, his mom, like he has all these like crazy characters but it's just like jovial slapstick comedy that's just hilarious but not necessarily true to life more so like caricatures of real people so on the other end of the spectrum would be a tv show that's trying to tell a real story with an actual message and address real issues and so, um, yeah, they're funny moments and they're goofy moments. Obviously, it's still a sitcom, but it has a real, the tone, the tone can get serious at times and can really take you there with um, dealing with real life issues. And my examples for that would be a show like A Different World and Moesha. And then you have Fresh Prince, which I feel like kind of lies in the middle somewhere where it does have those crazy moments like Jazz getting thrown out of the house, you know, every episode for making Uncle Phil mad. And then you have very serious acting moments where, where Will is dealing with having an absentee father and it's actually, you know, why did he want me, man? That hits my core every time I see it. Daddy issues. Before I jump right into Grownish, I want to talk about Blackish because Blackish is the original. Grownish is a spinoff, so I want to kind of give a little context on getting into Grownish. I feel like it has like the feel of like a new age Cosby show. You have two affluent parents with, you know, plenty money. 
and you have a large family of children and also you have the grandparents come in and be very involved with the family so i really do enjoy this show it's actually re recorded on my dvr every week i can't lie i really love it they lean more towards the cosby show end of the spectrum to me i still don't take the show too seriously i just you know watch it strictly for entertainment while i do enjoy the show i understand why people do have criticisms for the show for example um majority of the cast is mixed or biracial whatever you want to call it and um the show is called blackish so you would think that the show would feature actors that are that have two african-american parents so when i say half the cast is mixed i mean literally yara shahidi tracy ellis ross and miles brown literally half the cast is mixed and, and it makes sense for tracy ellis ross to play bo because her character herself is mixed but the rest of the characters supposedly are coming from to a, a mixed parent and a black parent it all comes down to do you consider mixed people black i actually gave a poll on my channel a couple of weeks ago i asked all of my subscribers do you consider a person with one white parent and one black parent do you consider them black do you consider them biracial do you consider them whatever that it is they call themselves you know and most people majority the overwhelming majority consider them biracial so with that being said i can understand why people would have an issue with half of the cast of blackish being played by biracial actors obviously there's a difference between biracial people and people with two black parents because they came up with a whole show called mixed dish i think the overarching issue is that when you hear a show called blackish you you want to see what you would think the stereotypical phenotype of a black person is, which would be brown skin, dark skin, wide nose, big lips, you know, our features that we own. And many times, especially in the past, if you look at the history of the media, dark skin people get overlooked and they often get, instead of getting to play those roles, biracial and mixed people and even light-skinned people have been chosen instead you think with a show called blackish you would finally get the proper representation that you're looking for it's kind of disappointing to see a cast where you don't actually see that represented many people had an issue with the fact that there is only one dark-skinned person in the main nucleus of the family and that's Marseille Martin's character and what do you know they gave her the stereotypical sassy rude and downright mean <laughs> uh personality type to the dark skin girl and that is the way they portray a lot of dark women in the media and it's very insulting because dark skinned women come in with all sorts of personalities and they don't just have to be angry all of the time mind you i love diane's character i love her witty banter with the other people on the show you know she has her soft moments but it's just interesting that they chose the dark skinned girl to give these characteristics i do want to do a whole other video and talk about colorism in black sitcoms because it's very prevalent it's a really huge issue but it'll be way too much for me to discuss at this very moment this video is already getting long but i just want to say shout out to marseille martin no shade to yar shahidi but i think everyone thought that yar shahidi would be like the breakout star of blackish when it's actually marseille martin who went on to write and produce her own movie which was actually good i really liked the movie and also recently she just won three NAACP awards so that little girl is destined for greatness so we're gonna go ahead and get into the show Grownish. i want to start off by saying i have nothing against any of the actors on this show most of them are multi-talented and are not just quote-unquote actors maybe acting might even be like their second line of work but they're like more into music and this and that so i i really have nothing against anybody on this cast i really um look at them as like the next generation of you know 
actors. I just want them to like kind of tighten the acting up a little bit and make it a little bit more believable. I just please, cause I want y'all. I want y'all to do. I want this show to be great. I do. I want it to be better. I'm gonna start off with the lead, Yara Shahidi. She is a very uplifting and an intellectual voice for our people. She speaks up on various racial issues and I really respect her for that. But her character, Zoe, is the complete opposite and Zoe is the oldest child in the family. This show is based around her going to college, right? I had so many high hopes for this show. I thought it would be sort of like when the Cosby show had the spinoff with a different world and they sent um, Denise off to college. I thought it would be a similar feel. If anything, this show is most like the first season of A Different World, but the, A Different World totally took a different turn when Denise left and became a classic, in my opinion. I feel like that's when it became a classic, that first season. It's not the best. This show, like I said, is like that first season. Just way more corny, way more campy. It's like really in the same vein of other freeform shows that I can't quite get into because of that. It feels like, like those shows feel like they're for kids, but then they still want to have adult themes and language. Like, you got to pick one side or the other. Like, it's very jarring. It's, it's jarring to me just watching it. Just the corniness of the jokes with you know we're smoking weed and drinking it's weird another difference between this show and a different world is it's a predominantly white institution pwi versus hbcu historically black college or university i went to a pwi there how do i explain this at pwis we have our pockets of blackness there was times where you could come to the union and it was full of like greek life and just black people in general you had that black close-knit togetherness where we would just all mingle together and it was just a safe space for us well and then you would probably have like that token white person you know like a lot of times when they have all white shows and there's a token black where well, there would be a token white you know just in the midst and you know i'm obviously at hbcus it's like that all over campus for this show they went for like a more diverse group but then they try to have their cake and eat it too they have these characters that are black they black woke like Aaron and the twins and then you have episodes with colorism appropriation and then they have like this whole theme of Beyonce homecoming and it's just like I feel like they just don't tackle it well whoever's writing these episodes don't have a good grasp on colorism or appropriation because I feel the the message is always lost it's not really truly conveyed the way it should be um you have an episode on colorism when you have no dark-skinned girl on the cast that's like literally the whole point of pointing out colorism the, the fact that dark-skinned women constantly get stereotyped as ghetto this and that and y'all don't put any black woman on the cast the main cast until season three they just now did it with ryan destiny i haven't really seen much of her personality but i just love that she's not the stereotypical black dark-skinned black girl that they try to throw in there with attitude sort of like that dejanay character mm -hmm. let's get back to zoe so zoe is to me very unlikable she reminds me of moesha and Moesha and Zoe both exhibit insufferable characteristics. They're both very opinionated when no one asks them, judgmental, self-centered, and very intrusive in other people's business, especially their friends. Um, they think they know best when they actually know nothing. And somebody have to basically snap on them for them to understand. Get out the Kool-Aid because you don't even know the flavor. Okay. She really doesn't have many redeeming qualities. It's like, okay, I'm going to be a jerk to you. But I'm going to smile and we're going to get past this. The character Zoe worked well with an ensemble cast on Blackish. It kind of gelled well. Her, her whole personality kind of gelled well with that. But carrying her own show, it just, it falls flat. It's not strong enough. It just, it doesn't read. You would think her character would grow over the seasons, but it's really like 
Oh, nothing new. Nothing different. Just the same old thing. Um, Even this new season, I had to catch myself up on this new season. It's not over yet, but it's like... Um, I think like six or seven episodes I watched. In these few episodes I watched, she had Judge know me for being pregnant and wanting to keep it. She was confused that Luca did not want to be her friend after she completely broke his heart and was kissing another man at the airport. I mean, I don't know if she knows that, but I mean, she definitely totally broke his heart and then moved out of the country. And expected for them to be cool when she got back and be able to be friendly like what and then she completely let Aaron down she was supposed to put in a good word with her father to help Aaron get a job and she completely flaked out let him down and she was kind of shocked that he was mad I mean she did kind of use him as a rebound and pretty much anytime she feels like using him as a rebound and wonders why he was upset they try to make it seem like she works for things, but she really doesn't. She gets it easy, just like in the palm of her hand. She has everyone like in the palm of her hand, even though she's a jerk. Like, I just, I don't get that. And no matter what's going on, Zoe is going to find a way to make it about herself. I feel like her, her character is a little true to life with the whole light skin privilege. The lighter you are in the community, you do get placed on a pedestal. People give you certain allowances that they wouldn't give darker people. And I feel like they took full advantage of that with this character. This is more so on a petty note. Zoe's character is supposed to be like this fashion student. She's like fashionable. She's worked with, you know, these this big celebrity. And I think she's worked with Teen Vogue and everything else. But to me, her style isn't even all that. She doesn't even look artsy. She doesn't look fashionable necessarily to me. She dresses like her fashion is like in between a like preteen Disney kid star, the way they dress. And on the other spectrum, she dresses like a middle-aged woman. Like her style really don't be giving me fashion art student, but okay. Like, I mean, Luca look like one. Even Ryan Destiny looked like one. Why does Zoe look so... She's a little bit too polished. I think that's what it is. She's a little bit too polished in the... Uh, who be dressing her? Who be dressing her? The only thing that saves her in those outfits is her hairstylist. So her hairstylist deserves a raise. But um, other than that, I'm just like, what's going on with these clothes? So like I was saying before, Zoe is unlikable much like moesha was unlikable but on her show she had supporting characters that picked up the slack they were strong reliable relatable and likable you liked the characters around moesha even though you could not stand her you had hakeem who was her next door neighbor who would come over all the time love hakeem he was like a part of the family you had kim who was funny loud we know somebody like him they're gonna keep the conversation lively they might get a little on your nerves because you can't tell them nothing because they're gonna tell your business but you still love them nonetheless you had nisi who was kind of like the underdog and you just want to root for nisi you want nisi to win because she gets the short end of the, of the stick all the time and then you had andel who was like the older person that gave you wise advice but she was still cool enough to hang out at her little you know juice bar it those characters were very strong and really they surrounded moesha even though you didn't like moesha they were good for her to interact with and kind of like show some of her redeemable qualities zoe on the other hand she's surrounded with the twins, Aaron, Vivek, Nomi, Anna, Doug, and Charlie. The acting toes the line. The acting toes the line between average and just terrible. Like, uh, the acting ain't good on this show. The acting, I think everybody needs a little acting class. <clears throat> the characters themselves just lack depth and are very one dimensional. It's like they're a little bit too on the predictable side. They're too one note. They're too like their personalities is just like set. So I'm gonna go down the line of the characters and kind of tell y'all what I mean. So let's start with the twins and they are played by Chloe and Halle, which are very talented. They have beautiful, beautiful voices. I believe Halle is gonna play Ariel in the new Little Mermaid, the live action Little Mermaid. So congratulations. And they are beautiful girls. I actually really love their look and their presence on the show. 
but I feel like they are giving the dialogue of the way a non-black person would think a sassy black girl with attitude would talk. Like, it's like they go on Twitter and they get all the, like, slang and buzzwords and they, they kind of know what is said, but they don't know how to put the flavor on it. I just... It's not the girls. The girls themselves are very proper and eloquent. And the hood slang they give just doesn't really necessarily roll off the tongue. I feel like this one should have been given maybe different personalities. I'm thinking on the lines of maybe like Tony and Lynn from Girlfriends. I see Chloe as more of the Tony character because she's already very confident. But, you know, you take that confidence to the max. She always dresses, you know, to the T, wearing designer, even though she probably can't afford it. Just, you know kind of feel a little bit better than everyone but that's just because she's motivated and she wants to be successful one day and you know she wants a man that's gonna do something with his life that's why she's with Doug you know just really passionate about advancing and then Hallie's character could be a little bit more like Lynn and she could you know, be a little bit of a goof off, be a little bit go with the flow, you know what I'm saying? Still on her pro blackness, wokeness, but you know, struggle with this whole new love interest, this, you know, white guy, but kind of, you know, maybe struggle with her studies or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like just give her more to do instead of giving them these Maya attitudes that are not really translating. But I love the relationship with Doug. There's no struggle love there. She don't have to struggle to love him. She He doesn't really like do all that cheating. He seems to really love her and appreciate her. Every time you see them, they're all booed up. Like, um, I mean, they have their typical relationship up and downs, but it's not like struggle love. So I love to see it. A young black couple together. Diggy. I have a little tiny crush on Diggy, so I might be a little bit biased. I feel like his acting is the best. And maybe it's because he gets to come in with his little few lines. He doesn't really have, like, major storylines based around him. So maybe it's because he can come in and punch his lines out and punch out. But his acting seems to be the best. And um, I really enjoy his character because he seems to keep the other characters on that show grounded. So I, I love what they're doing with Doug. So let's move on to another fine actor, which is Aaron, played by Trevor Jackson, another one who is really, really cute. Um, he's one of the main characters, but I'm gonna have to be honest. And oh, let me say something good about him. I, I like to I, I like to always say something good about people before I say anything, you know, critical or negative. Um, Trevor Jackson is a great singer. He has a beautiful voice, but his acting, his Oh, his acting can be a little cringy and his joke delivery just kind of falls flat. The jokes are already bad enough, but it's just like, even if they had good jokes, I just don't think he could deliver them because he has that. I feel like he's playing himself too much. I feel like he really needs to get in his acting bag and really like jump into this Aaron character. Okay, just speaking on his character alone, Aaron is very contradictory he's like very in the beginning he's very woke and pro-black but it's like is Aaron doing it for social media is he trying to be woke for social media but in real life he's not actually committed to the movement which is a real dilemma in this day and age I feel like a lot of people say a lot online but in real life ain't really living up to what they're talking about so I like that storyline but I feel like they didn't really dive into it the way they could maybe they just don't the writers don't have the range to do so but they kind of it kind of they kind of let it fall by the wayside we don't really hear too much about it this season at all like he was kind of having like a little internal struggle with that before and we haven't even heard about it at all this season even though i kind of love where his character is going they show the reality of the predatory student loan struggle as well as the struggle of finding a career after college which is very difficult for many people um, they tried to throw in a little relationship with Anna. I feel like that was completely purposeless. Purposeless. What? Why? Why? Well, for what reason? I feel like they only did that to give, um, Joey's character something else to be mad about and to play holier than thou about. Then this whole love triangle with Zoe, Aaron, and 
Luca. It just, if uh, I just didn't care. I didn't care. The tension was not thick enough. I didn't. Usually, when it's a love triangle, you're rooting for one or the other person to get, you know, to win. You know, the Twilight Saga. You either you wanted Edward or the other one, the Wolf. I forgot his name. To win. You were Team Edward or Team Jacob. You were either Team Edward or Team Jacob. I didn't care who got Zoe because, first of all, I don't even like Zoe. She's very unlikable. Second of all, I just wasn't invested, period. And usually I root for the woman, but I just, like I said, Zoe's annoying. I don't care about her. So, I believe Vivek's character is supposed to be the comic relief. I believe because they don't really give him too much of a storyline, especially these past couple of seasons like the first season they kind of you know gave him a little sob story but you don't really he don't have a storyline no more so i'm just assuming he's the comic relief but he's not fulfilling his duties at all i mean i think he's meant to be the corny one but lovable but it's just who cares like if they cut vivek from this show tomorrow who care when i think about who he should be mi mirroring on a different world i'm thinking ron johnson who is corny annoying um but a part of you still roots for him to win and you still love ron in a way you know somebody like ron but vivek you just want to flick him I, I i actually want you to get rid of him like he's not bringing anything to this show and um it's kind of like no point he doesn't push the storyline in any sort of way you have luca who's cute chill and zen unless always involved that's when you see him kind of like get angry you get to see a little sort of action with luca then but other than that, who cares? Then you have Anna, who's sweet yet uptight and a Republican. Then you have Nomi, who's like the free spirit of the group. Because she's kind of like a screw up as well. She ended up getting pregnant. And they're trying to drag this pregnancy. I'm asleep. It's not doing... It's boring. I just... Uh, blah. And then we get on to Charlie, who's like now the dean of the school who is played by Dion Cole. I feel like he is probably the most underutilized on this show. And I'm gonna tell you why. On Blackish, his character really is the comic relief. That's the comic relief. He comes in, he gives you the jokes. He's hilarious. I, I find him so funny. That's why it's crazy to me on this show. He doesn't do it for me at all. He's not funny whatsoever. And I'm just like, why are y'all not using him? Y'all need to probably, first of all, y'all probably need to let Dion Cole write his own jokes because he has this very specific brand of comedy that's unique to him. And I think he could really add, you know, another layer to this show that would be really funny. He could be to this show what Sinbad was to a different world, give like the wisdom, whether it's just to Aaron's character or to all the characters. Like, you know, maybe have these spurts of like great advice or, you know, life experience that could truly help. Um, and I just feel like, like I said, I feel like he's very underutilized on this show and it's a travesty because he's very talented. Do better. Now, by the end of this video, you're probably like, why do you even watch this show in the first place? <laughs> Good question. Because it actually took me forever to actually get into this season. Um, I let six episodes pile up on my DVR before I even gave them a chance. And the only reason why I watched them is because I was doing this video and I wanted to be up to date on what they were currently doing, which is not much, not much a change. Like I said on my Tyler Perry video, I don't necessarily want these shows to end. I just want them to do better. And that's why I made this video because I want to give constructive criticism on how they could improve. I like seeing black creators create. Um, but Kenya Barris seems to have a colorism problem, not only with blackish, but with grownish so y'all let me know how y'all feel down below do you agree with me do you not agree with me let me know any rants you would like to see in the future because i'm currently making a list and yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in my next one peace